Well, today's video is sponsored by Black Gold Compost Company. We want to thank the good people over at Black Gold for their generous donation of all this black cow cow manure that we're using in our video today. Thank you for sponsoring our channel. All right, good morning, Homestead family. Today's video is going to be on growing some of these beautiful Korean sweet potatoes in the ground. We'll be right back. <music> Well, welcome back, friends. I got these uh, beautiful little sweet potatoes I wanted to share with you today. And uh, I can never pronounce these Asian words. This one's so hard, even Nancy can't say it. Mm -mm. So I wrote everything down on, <laughs> on a little card here so you can read it for yourself. And I'm gonna try to pronounce the name of it and try not to laugh. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, Bam Gugama. Um, this is a Korean sweet potato and Nancy and her mama went over there and picked these out at an uh, Asian grocery store. And it looks like that's probably about the only place that we know to get them at. So if you want to grow these, find a, a, a local Asian grocery store and go in and ask them for this potato and they will, they will put you right on them. Mm -hmm. um, these have a, a, a unique taste and this is Nancy and her mama's very favorite uh, sweet potato. Uh, it's probably my least favorite, but this their favorite. Mm -hmm. So we're going to grow a whole lot of them this year. And, and to grow a whole lot of them, instead of growing them in containers like we normally do, we're going to uh, dedicate a raised bed over there and grow them in the ground. That way I can get um, as many of these as I can get. Uh, take a look at these up close. The, um, the potatoes are actually kind of small. Uh, that's okay. That's the way they grow, and that's the way that you actually want them. You want them small. They taste real similar to a chestnut, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a, a unique taste. The skin is a reddish purple, and um, the flesh is white, and it's a little bit on the dry side. But um, when you cook this potato, that flesh inside, it kind of turns like a slight yellowish color mm -hmm. on it. So and again, it's, and it's the sweeter, the smaller one is the sweeter than the bigger one. Yeah. And it's a lot more expensive, but it's well worth growing it because it's so expensive. Uh, I think it was two eighty nine a pound. It well, was that expensive. We don't know what the price will be by the time people go to, <laughs> go to buy any of this, the way prices are jumping around yeah. lately. But, but this is a potato that I see you and your mama just walking around nibbling on these things mm -hmm. like, a, like it was a peach or something. Oh, yeah. It's sweeter than any uh, fruit. And my mom and us, we really love it. We like it as a snack. And if we're hungry at all or just craving that sweet, this is what we eat. We just steam some or put some in the oven and we get a couple of them and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Well, we'll see how many we can grow for you so y'all can enjoy them all you want. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're going to um, um, spend the day getting one of the raised beds prepped. I, I had silage tarp over it. It's a brand new raised bed, so we've never used it for. So we had the silage tarp over there to keep the weed pressure off of it. Mm -hmm. So it's never been um, amended. And this Florida sandy soil we have down here is really bad to grow anything. So we're going to have to uh, get that tarp off of there and um, amend it with about four to six inches of black cow cow manure that uh, animal compost mixed in with that uh, sandy soil um, actually gives us a fighting chance, don't it? Mm -hmm. It we, makes it wonderful. Yeah, we've had a lot of success in our raised beds last year by uh, amending heavily with the um, black cow. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can promise you, if we didn't have that black cow, we wouldn't have grew anything in them beds. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, we're going to get that done. We've already got these um, little taters in the house already in some jars of water. So we'll wait for them to slip out. This is January, so we got a little bit of time on our side to let these slips produce, and um, we'll come back in, in the spring after the, the temperatures get on up, and we'll, um, we'll get these slips out of the house, and uh, 
we'll get them into bed together. And we're going to watch these, um, you know, all the way through the summer as they continue to grow. They take about 120 days or so. Mm -hmm. So you got to be patient with them. Mm -hmm. So it'll take about 120 days after you plant them. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not even counting, you know, trying to work the slips out. So mm -hmm. it's kind of an investment, but well worth it. Well worth it. And we're going to make something special. I'm going to create a special dish oh boy. with this. So just you got to wait. It's going to be delicious. I'm sure you're going to make a, a video, right? I'm going to make a video and I'll show what, what it is. <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. So that's uh that's good news because I look forward to whatever she, <laughs> she cooks. So. <laughs> So anyway, well, let's uh, go ahead and get this um, let's get this bed started, and and uh, we'll be back in the days ahead, and we'll watch this grow all the way out until she cooks something. See you then.
Well, welcome back, friends. Our uh, Korean sweet potatoes have slipped out. They've done really well. Some of them are, you know, the, the perfect size like this one. And some of them have just got ridiculously long. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that's a pretty long slip. I prefer to have them small like this one. I put them in, they're easier to handle. But anyway, we got them ready. Um, we, we're we gonna pull these uh, slips off of the off of the sweet potato and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get them installed today and get them off and running. Uh, to, this morning was our la last night was our last cool night that I see in the, um, in the near future, you know, on the uh, extended forecast. So I think we might be uh, out of the cool weather at this point. This is already March. So um, down here in Florida, our last freeze is right around the second or third week in March. And if you look out on that uh, predicted uh, uh, forecast, you can say, hey, man, you, you're pretty much out of the woods. So let's go ahead and get these in because I don't want to put these out if the temperatures are at night less than 45 degrees. So I think we're well above that. We're in the 50s and going up into the mid and upper 80s in the daytime now. So let's get these things off of these taters. I want to show you how we pull them off. There's really not much to it. We'll pull it off and um, get them ready to put in. Well, there we go. Here's the slips that are growing below the water level, have some beautiful root system on there. So to take them off, you just simply grab right here and just pull right on down and they'll pop right off. And then you take them and you try to find out where you can separate them. As you can see, that little clump right there had three distinct slips with a root system already on it. So that's what I'm looking for. I take the slips at that point, put them back in the water till I can get over there. Here's another one. There's a slip. There's a slip. So this one had three on it as well. Nice roots. Okay, let me get the rest of these off and we'll head over and get them in the ground.
Well, there we go. We got 16 hills of uh, Korean sweet potatoes put in this morning. Miss Nancy's watering it in right now. Um, when y'all plant these, if you plant your sweet potatoes, be sure after you get those slips in the ground, you got them healed up like I did, be sure to keep these things good and wet, especially the first three weeks. Just keep in mind that these slips are used to sitting in water and just having all the water they can get. So they'll be under a little bit of a drought stress and root stress from what we just put them through. So you wanna make sure they stay wet for three weeks. Um, to do that, you want to come out in the morning and water them in pretty good to get them good and wet. Come out around 11.30 or 12 o'clock, water them in again, keep them good and moist and cool, and then come back in the afternoon and water them in lightly that in the afternoon if they show signs of wilt. If they're not showing any wilt in the afternoon, then don't water them. And, and let it ride until the next morning. But that's your little formula for three weeks on watering. After that, it's maybe once a week, uh, it will be plenty. And in fact, you can uh, probably get in a good rhythm with the rainstorms in the summer and just let it go from rainstorm to rainstorm. So I wouldn't let them go any more than two weeks or so without any water, but they're pretty uh, good about that, okay? so. We'll be back in the days ahead. We'll watch the progress of Nancy's sweet potatoes. Right, babe? Oh, yeah. Looking forward to eating them. <laughs> See you soon. Well, good morning. Welcome back. It's been eight days since me and Nancy planted our stand of... Uh, of sweet potatoes and unfortunately we've got a blast of arctic air coming down tonight it's going down to 27 degrees so we're really concerned um, about our sweet potatoes we may in fact have to completely start over but um, they don't like any temperatures that are less than 45 or 50 degrees they, they you, you start to lose them so what we're going to do is we're going to take some um, containers and we're just going to simply try to cover up, try to cover up each plant just like that, all the way down, and hope, hopefully, that will get them to survive this terrible weather that's coming through. It's only going to last one night, so um, maybe we can get through it, and then we'll be back in the days ahead, and we'll we'll take a look at what happened, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. So. We'll be back soon. Well, we survived those low temperatures last night. Um, we just got all the buckets off of the plants, tried to uncover them. Um, we did get a little damage on some of this stuff. Um, we've got some wilt but and a little bit of, um, looks like a little bit of freeze damage on a couple of the pieces, but overall they're not really too bad considering what they just went through, you know, 27 degree temperature last night. So. Um, Nancy's watering them in right now to try to revive them just a little bit, uh, try to get those roots stimulated and get them taking some of that water back up into the plant because that cold air really dries them out real bad. So she's working that in right now and as soon as, uh, I think as soon as this stuff just gets a little bit of sunlight on it and a little bit of water, I think we might get them to recover. We may, we may have pulled through. So. We'll be back in a few days, take about a week and we'll know for sure. Um, I'm thinking that these will decline just a little bit further before they start to show improvement. So as long as that root system that was underground survived and did well, I think it'll shoot new shoots up and I think it'll come through. So we'll be back in a few days and we'll take another look at this stuff and see how we did. See you then.
Well, welcome back, friends. Our sweet potatoes have been uh, struggling and really trying to hang on to life. Uh, it's been eight days since that freeze came through here. And you remember me and Nancy tried to save them and did everything we could to protect them. Uh, we did keep the frost off of them, but we couldn't keep the temperatures up. It was 27 degrees that night for two or three hours. So um, it took its toll. You can look at some of the plants. If you look at them up close, you can see some dieback on some of the uh, leaves and the stems are looking kind of puny. They're not real happy right now. Um, the only thing I can do is, you know, keep them watered and keep them wetted and moist and uh, hope for some <laughs> warmer, more seasonable uh, springtime temperatures. So I think once the heat hits, they may recover. Uh, right now, we're still about 50-50. They may or may not make it. So I sure hope they make it because Miss Nancy sure had her heart set on these things and so did her mama. So I want to do everything I can to come through for her because she worked so hard on trying to get these things in the ground with me and I wanted to, I want it to pay off. So we'll be back in a few weeks. Let's let these things continue to try to uh, get some traction. I'll keep babying them and monitoring their water content and see if we can't get these things to, to get some traction and uh, we'll take a look at it then. So we'll see you soon. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been 20 days since we had that freeze not too long ago, and uh, Nancy's sweet potatoes are really starting to try to make a comeback. We've lost a few, uh, five or six of them, just <laughs> didn't survive it. But uh, I've always learned one thing in uh, gardening is, uh, first of all, never give up, and the other thing is always have a backup plan. <laughs> so I got, um, I had a couple of these taters left. I just left them in the house and let them continue to slip out. So uh, today, since it's been 20 days and the temperatures are starting to increase a little gradually every day, uh, I thought it'd be a good day to come out and replace the ones that the freeze uh, took out on me. Now, uh, we've also got um, a couple of days of rain coming. So I picked a nice overcast day because I didn't want to put them out and let them go through the root shock and be subjected to bright sun the first day. Then I have a couple of days of some rain coming in to keep them nice and cool and um, moistened. And I think at that point, by three days from now, these should be starting to do okay. So let me take these, um, let me pop these slips off just like we did the other ones. These are pretty good ones. You know, some of them are <laughs> some of them are pretty long. So uh, I know Nancy's going to be glad to get these out of the house. So I just put them in the water, separate them out. Those are pretty much ready. Let's do this one too. Okay, we got several slips. I actually got more slips than I didn't realize I had that many of them. So that's good, right? So let's head on over there to uh, the raised bed area and let's, uh, let's commence to putting these new ones and replacements in there. Let's get started. Well, here we are. 
really not that bad considering what they went through. Here's one here that just absolutely did not make it. The freeze damage on that plant completely destroyed it. So that's a good one to replace. We've got another one right there. I see a couple of more up there, but really I'd say about 80%, 85% of this uh, raised bed stand of sweet potatoes came through it okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here where the plant gave up. I'm just gonna dig out a hole, put a little bit of bone meal, a little bit of blood meal in the hole and um, take a new replacement and put it in there. And uh, I think in a few days we'll be off and running. Okay, let's get it started. Well, there we go. We got the replacement soon for Nancy's sweet potatoes. They look like they're doing pretty good. I've noticed when I was transplanting in the new replacements that some of these have already started running and, and new, uh, new potatoes are coming out three or four feet away. So there's a lot happening underground that I just wasn't seeing. So I'm happy about that. So this stand of uh, sweet potatoes are hopefully off and running now. Um, we got some rain coming and some warmer days ahead. So um, we'll be back in the days ahead. We'll take a look at the progress of Nancy's sweet potatoes. We'll see you soon. Well, good morning, friends. It's been 45 days since we uh, started our uh, pota sweet potato slips out here in raised bed, and they they had a real struggle. Of course, you know, just two cold snaps came through, and we we replaced some a couple of weeks ago. So it looks like today that we are really back on the road to recovery now. If you look up close, you can see some of the plants are starting to make some fairly good runners on them. So they're they're getting some, uh, they're trying to get some traction. So I thought what I would do today is I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna side dress each of the plants with a little bit of triple tin, and then I'm gonna heal up the, uh, the uh, each plant, uh, heal them up so they, um, they hold that fertilizer in place and help support the plant a little bit better. 
and uh, maybe that'll encourage them to start making those runners take off. So let's get started on today's chore. Um, it's really not a whole lot to it. So as soon as we get it done, as soon as we can get these things going, let's get started. I just simply go and make a circle right around each one of those heels. Try not to get too much now. And um, the reason I'm using this synthetic fertilizer, I'm sure I'll get some blowback from everybody instead of using organic, but I've got Florida sand down here. Very, very difficult to grow in. Um, this triple 10 is a synthetic, but it, and not really, in my opinion, really anything wrong with it. It's been used for centuries. <laughs> But um, this will help get this uh, sandy soil a little bit of help. Um, if I don't use anything but, um, you know, slow release bone meal or something, it might take way too long. I just can't let it sit like that. So we're going to go ahead and give it a little extra bump here. Okay, got the, uh, got the row healed up, it's ready to go. Got that fertilizer making good contact with that soil and healed underneath it. So that should hold it right where I want it, right on that root system. It's starting to sprinkle now. I don't know if it's gonna get a whole lot of rain. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run the overhead sprinkler out here for about 30 minutes or so to make sure that that fertilizer is uh, activated and washed on down and it's not laying on any roots. So let me get that started and we'll be back in the days ahead and we'll watch it uh, progress of Nancy's sweet potatoes. See you soon. Well, good morning, friends. It's been four weeks since we side dressed this stand of uh, sweet potatoes with the triple 10. And as you can see, in just a period of four weeks, these sweet potatoes have really taken off and uh, really just responded well to uh, having a little bump of uh, fertilizer. So they're really doing good. They got some really long runners now. And if you look up close, you can see they're starting to put on some blooms. Yesterday, this thing was covered in blooms, and um, and I ran the sprinklers and <laughs> unfortunately knocked some of them off, but there's still a lot on there, and there's still more coming out. So uh, take a look up close. You can see how pretty the flowers are. I think that's why Miss Nancy likes them so much. Remember, these are part of the Morning Glory family, so they get these uh, flowers in the mornings. They might last one or two days, and some more will come out. So the morning time is the prettiest. But Miss Nancy really likes them flowers. But uh, these 
sweet potatoes. I've been out here in this raised bed for 15 weeks now since we planted them out here. And I'd say they're right now maybe not quite to the halfway point. I'm going to let these things continue to grow all summer all the way out until late fall until we start to get some kind of really cold temperatures. I just don't want to get a freeze on them. So I'm a long way away from there. But they're looking pretty good to have this much foliage on them at the 15 week point. I, I'm, I'm pleased. So we'll keep these going and uh, we'll keep checking up on them and giving you an update, you know, every four weeks or so and take a look at how well they're doing all the way up until we get to harvest them. So. We'll be back in about a month. See you then. Well, welcome back, friends. It's been 154 days since we started our uh, sweet potatoes from the little slips, planting them out in the, the raised bed together. Remember mm -hmm. that? <laughs> so uh, yesterday, I dug up a handful just to do a sample, and I just wanted to show that with you before we harvest them. Um, here's the size that Miss Nancy, she really likes on that size right mm -hmm. there. That's the to me seems to be real small but she she says that's the perfect size ain't it yeah it yeah. cooks it doesn't take that long to cook and it's delicious yeah i, I didn't think about that yeah mm -hmm. i guess it does cook real quick mm -hmm. but anyway that's the perfect size and uh, then we have you know a magnum mm -hmm. and uh, this is something i wanted to show you sometimes you have to be careful or you'll end up with something like that. Nah, well, and really there's nothing you can do about it. But that right there is from a vole. A vole will crawl and tunnel under the ground. He's looking for this kind of root to, to munch on and he ruins it when he finds it. So this this tater here ain't no good, but this just to show you, they, do, they will get big if you let them. And here's, um, here's another pretty good size one. I wanted to point out Whenever you're harvesting and you're using forks and implements, you got to kind of be careful. You see where I hit the side of this potato and I hit it right there, I kind of ruined it. But that's another good sized potato. And here's, here's one that I say is the perfect size, but Miss Nancy says, no, it's not. <laughs> but anyway, that's a, you know, so you get a range. Mm -hmm. um, for, you know from this big up to you know humongous like this so um today uh is 154 days uh, remember these are um roots they're they're not tubers like a regular old potato well you know they get to a certain size and that's it these these are roots and they will keep right on expanding and keep right on growing all the way up until you actually get the ground to freeze even a frost on top of the the leaves, the vines really doesn't affect them very much, but um, my goal is always to get them out, you know, a couple of weeks prior to that first predicted freeze date. But in this case, since I'm seeing stuff like this and I'm at 154 days and I have potatoes, you know, all different ranges of sizes like this, that I think it would be smart to go ahead and rip out and harvest up everything we got out there before some bad things happen like voles get them or we get really heavy rains and it causes the, all the potatoes to rot. We're, um, this is August and we're fixing to head right into September which is our rainy season here in Florida. It's uh, actually the start of hurricane season. <laughs> yeah. So uh, even if we don't get hit with a hurricane, most of the time when a hurricane comes through anywhere near Florida, we get a whole lot of cast off from um, you know from the from the storm, which you know can really saturate um, with heavy heavy rains and a lot of wind. So this is probably about the best time to go ahead and get them, don't you think? Oh yeah, we can't. Uh 
I'm looking forward to eating him. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> That's her favorite sweet potato. Mm -hmm. So I don't really care for him. She she loves them. So this. Me and Mama. Yeah, Mama will be in heaven. Yeah, her and her Mama. <laughs> we'll give her a box, a couple of boxes of them. Oh yeah, she loves them. But these are a little harder to harvest than you know the the white potatoes. These you know the vines are difficult to pull back, and you get they kind of grow. They want to grow. The potato root wants to grow down. The potato white potatoes they kind of like to make a big ball but the um the sweet potatoes they grow down it, it makes it hard if you can get them to shake loose i use a uh, i use a big old potato rake and i try to pry up and be careful when i'm doing that to try to loosen that ground to get them to come up and you just grab a hold of the of the vines and kind of pull and pry and work it at the same time. It's not a real fun process, but it gets the job done. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why I like the Grillman containers so much easier because all you have to do is just dump them out and <laughs> it's over with. But this is hi highly productive and it's uh, a little bit harder to do, but I think it's, you know, if you're looking for high volume of- uh, Massive, uh, massive uh, amount of potatoes. A massive <laughs> harvest. <laughs> Um, that's what you would you mm -hmm. want to do it like this. So mm -hmm. anyway, let's go ahead and um, get the job done because the sooner we get it done, the sooner we can get out of here before the heat hits because we're already in the, you know the triple digits around here for the last couple of weeks. So it's pretty hot. <laughs> All right, you ready to get started? Ready. Let's roll. Okay.
Well, we had a, 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 a pretty good harvest today. The only problem was is it was hot. Very hot. <laughs> it's already in the 90s, so um, that made it hard for old people. Mm -hmm. Like uh, old Hank Jr. says, country boy can't survive. <laughs> it's more like old people can't survive. We did it, though. We did it with God's help. <laughs> and we got a table full. These are all her Korean um, sweet potatoes. We got them in here in the chicken brooder right now. And um, I keep the chicken brooder right around the mid-80s. And uh, I don't have to put a heat lamp or anything on top of these potatoes. All I do is I will cover these potatoes with a blanket to try to hold in some of that moisture and some of that humidity is trying to evaporate out of the potatoes over the next two, day, two weeks. And uh, we'll keep them covered. And then at the end of two weeks, we can come out here and these things will have sweetened up. You don't want to just harvest a sweet potato and go in and cook it because it'll be too starchy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it tastes like a regular old tater. So let them, let them cure up for at least 10 days, 14 days, and under a blanket in some humid conditions. I got a little window right here that um, lets a little bit of ventilation through this brooder, but uh, it stays quite warm in here. So let's cover them up and um, let's get them off onto the curing process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome, handsome. Okay, just cover them over. That's all there is to it. It's all the way back here, huh? Get a little bit more to the back. Okay. Tucking them for the night for a couple of two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to love them. They got, I'm going to weigh some of the sweet potatoes once it's cured. Yeah, some of, them are, some of them are magnificent ones. Some of them are a little bit larger than what is optimum, but uh, I guarantee you, y'all won't throw none of them away. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little uh, journey on uh, growing these uh, Korean sweet potatoes in the raised bed, a little different than we normally do it in the containers. Mm -hmm. but, it, it, it um, produces a high yield, so mm -hmm. if that's what you're looking for is a yes. lot that will last um, you know, mm -hmm. the rest of the year, uh, that would be the way to go. So anyway, we thank you for watching. We hope our video brought a smile to your face and some joy to your heart on this day. Mm -hmm. So to me and her, see you next time. Always remember, by, by his hands, hands we are fed. fed. Give, Give us, Lord, Lord our daily, daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Mom's going to love this. Oh, she's going to so love this.